Yo, what's up? I'm now outside my home and uh, nowadays, well, it's getting winter. Nowadays, I see lots and lots of posts about why their Tesla is charging slow. So in this video, I will try to make it as short as possible. And I will also gather all the information in one video to explain to you and give you some tip. And I will only limit it to Tesla. I might make another video about other generic EVs, but Tesla uh, is different. The Tesla works differently than the, than the other ones. So MC Hammer, my Tesla Model 3, has been parked here for several days, so the battery is quite cold. And Sentry Mode has been running. And also, by the way, well, it's actually not visible now, but uh, if it was full of frost, you will see that the Tesla will keep that area heated up. Also, this area heated up. So that might suck a little bit extra power, just to, so you know, in case you want to park it at an um, airport or something. So the car should be pretty cold right now. Yeah, pretty cold. Yeah, fire up the heater. And you see, this is what you can expect in a Tesla is that you see something like this and you see there's a blue area here. This is, um, uh, the energy is then made unavailable because the battery is cold. So let me bring out, uh, scan my Tesla. Right, heater is blasting, but heater is blasting, and um, uh, the thing that you guys usually don't see is that. Well, actually, I can explain here. So this line here means. Oh, uh, is it kind of hard to see there? Kind of, yeah. This dotted line means that we have re restri uh, um, reduced regenerative braking region, and then this line here means that we have reduced power output, reduced acceleration, basically. It's because the battery is cold. And usually what you guys don't see is something like this. This is Scan My Tesla. It's a separate app. We can see more information about what's going on right now. For example, the car is now pulling 6.5 kilowatts from the battery. The battery is at 4.75 degrees Celsius. And you see here, 250 kilowatt of uh, discharge power. Uh, usually if the battery is nice and warm and if it's highly high charge, we should have over 400 kilowatt. This is region power, 15 kilowatt region power. So, and also um, interesting observation is that the BMS here, the battery management system, oh, I touched something. But the BMS, the battery management system knows that the state of charge is 66%, but it will display it as 63% because 3% is made unavailable. Once the battery heats up, you will get that back. So uh, I will move over to uh, in front of the house now and show you something. Okay, so first tip is how can you preheat the battery? If the car is locked and no one is in it, you can simply just start preheating for the app. And that will heat at the cabin. I'm going to show you here, there. So what this means is that um, we are now preheating pre the cabin, but pay attention to these two numbers, the, the 3.0. Those are the, actually the, the front and the rear motors. They are, uh, I call them the afterburner. They are activated to uh, generate heat. And then this car has pretty smart heat scavenging to harvest that heat and put it into the battery. So you can see it lower here, 6.75, that's battery inlet. I can zoom in to see better. The battery inlet, the temperature in the coolant going into the battery is now rising. And this is the way for you to preheat the battery with a Tesla Model 3. You simply just start it like this, start the heater and you're not in it. And then for Model S and X, you can also do the same thing. I don't have the scan my Tesla for it, but I assume it works for the same, the same way. But S and X, they, they don't use the motors. They actually have a dedicated battery heater. But now let me show you what happens if you plug it in. Oh, I forgot to tell you that if you sit inside a car or the car is unlocked, then you see uh, the afterburners, they shut down and they don't heat up the battery anymore. And now we are plugged in and you see that we are pulling six kilowatt from the plug, 25 amp single phase. But, well, it, it's not obvious to, because from here, it looks like you're charging. But then if you look in Scalmet Tesla to see what's really going on right now, you see that 
<laughs> we are actually pulling 5.5 kilowatt to heat up the battery. This is the stators. And then this is the, the input into the battery. See, we are actually not charging. We are actually slightly discharging the battery. And the reason for that is that again here you see that the coolant temperature is rising and the battery is at 5 degrees Celsius. So the car figures out that it wants to heat up the battery before it starts charging. So this is a tip if you plug it in at your cabin and or the car has been stationary for a long time. It will try to heat up, but I don't remember how high. I think it was maybe 10 degrees or something before start, um, charging can start. And also, if you've been charging on Shuko or something really slow and it's really cold outside, then that is simply not enough charging power to keep the battery heated. We are now outside of Circle K at the 150 kilowatt fast charger. And you see, we are getting only 12 kilowatts. So actually, outside my home, I didn't charge because simply because there wasn't enough power. So I think I said it wrong there. If you have fast enough uh, AC charging at home, you will probably get some power, but the, the battery will also try to heat up. But over here, we're getting 12, 13 kilowatt because that's what the, the BMS will allow you to charge. And then even though we have 150 kilowatt available here, and what you don't see behind the scene is that it's actually pulling an additional seven kilowatt for the afterburners or well, uh, the so-called battery heater. So it's actually pulling uh, almost 20 kilowatts trying to heat up the battery. You see here, battery inlet is going up. It's trying to heat up the battery. We draw here, so the battery is at 6.75 degrees. So what can you do to improve the situation? Well, you can preheat the car remotely. Uh, if you preheat it about half an hour, the battery should be around 20, 25 degrees, and then you will charge way faster. So that's one way of doing it. And another problem now is that we have too high stellar charge. So uh, the slow charging is actually a product of, in a way, stellar charge and temperature. The lower stellar charge you have, the faster you will charge, even if you have the same temperature. And then the other way, if, if you have the higher stellar charge, the slower it will charge. So, but now what we're going to do is we will go to the supercharger and I will show you what happens there. So we will not charge too long here. We go to Nebenes and then we unplug this one. Yeah, okay, it already, it already happens, but let me unplug first. Okay, so for now, uh, if you navigate to a supercharger, Tesla supercharger with your Tesla, if the battery is too cold, it will start preheating. Uh, it depends when it starts preheating. Because the battery is pretty cold now and we are going to dry well, it will actually start preheating now. But sometimes if the battery is warmer, it might preheat 10, 15 minutes before. And then it also depends on state of charge. Because if you have low state of charge and you will ride it with, let's say, less than 10% or less than 20%, then it won't preheat. Because remember, like I told you that, how fast you can charge depends also on state of charge. So even if you don't have too hot tep, uh, battery and you arrive at the supercharger, you will still get okay speed. So again, what the takeaway from this is that if you want to charge fast, you should try to charge your Tesla with low state of charge. Ideally, let's say 20%, then you should get okay speed even if the battery is kind of cold. But also, I want to show you that now that we are in this preconditioning battery for fast charging mode or whatever you call it you see that it doesn't heat it up that aggressively because it takes in account that you will start driving so that's what we're going to do right now yeah let's start driving okay so now we are on the way, way to uh, Nebenes supercharger and uh, you see here that uh, the the front motor is working to generate heat and this one of course is the model 3 is like this that uh, it's mostly rear wheel drive and the front motor is not doing much unless we need that extra power but uh, that's because we have navigated the supercharger and then this this feature for now mostly works towards superchargers but uh, ideally you can navigate to any fast charger and the tesla will recognize it as a fast charger and start preheating but as for now it doesn't work properly it only works on some places uh, i think in denmark or other places in europe but not in norway so uh, what i'm going to show you is that um, i'm going to constant navigation to uh, the supercharger and you will notice that this one here will go to zero 
there. Now it stopped doing that uh, preconditioning for supercharger because the, the next thing I will talk about is that uh, this car has heat scavenging. So as we drive now, you see this one and this one, th those are the front and the rear stators or basically the motors, they heat up as we drive. And the faster we drive, the more leftover heat they generate. And that leftover heat is re redirected towards the battery. And this is called heat scavenging. So in general, if you want to heat up the battery fast, you better drive fast. And uh, I can mention that um, man uh, most actually <laughs> Most other EVs, they don't have heat scavenging. Uh, heat scavenging is not unique for Tesla, but uh, which means that for, for the other EVs to heat up, there is mostly one other method, which is to, uh, uh, when, when you drive, when you discharge a battery, this one here, you see here, this one is discharge power, 30 kilowatts. So we are pulling about 0.5, 0.4C right now when we're going uphill. And that discharge process will actually generate a little bit of heat in the battery. And this is the main reason why other EVs, they cold gate. I should make a video and explain what cold gate is, but uh, because other EVs don't use this heat scavenging to actively heat up the battery while it's driving. It's only getting heat from the, the, the discharging process itself. Whereas Tesla does the right thing, which is to uh, also take out the leftover heat. But um, the faster we drive, then it's like a double win-win here because the faster we drive, the higher the power output and the more the battery heats up. And also the faster uh, the, the faster the motors, these two work, then the more leftover heat they have. So my tip for you is that, you know, if you drive, we, we are going to uh, Nebenes and we can speed up soon, but if you go into Ghoul, where you have to drive slow or other places where you have to drive slow, then you will not get that much heat into the battery. So many people also ask like, hey, how many hours did you drive? Or you know, some people, they are posting a picture and like, oh, I'm charging so slow and I've been driving for two hours. Well, if you drove from Oslo to Ghoul, that road is pretty shitty and slow. So uh, you won't build up too much heat in the battery. But if you've been driving like I will do here, in the 110 zone, then you will build up the, the heat much faster. So there is no absolute answer on how many hours you need to drive. In, in general, what you need to do is you have to drive fast or you can preheat the battery while stationary. That, uh, that is actually the best tip to heat up the battery. But okay, let's just uh, keep driving then. So I started navigating to the supercharger again. So it, it starts preheating. You can see it here. See, stator is pulling 1.5 in the front, but what I want to show you now is that um, the battery starts heating up. You can see it here, 13.8 degrees. So ideally, this is what you want to do. You want to uh, navigate to a supercharger so that you can properly heat up. And the one thing you can notice is this one here. You see, uh, that's max regen power. It's an indication of how fast you can regen, which also means how fast you can charge. So you see, as we move now, as the stator chart drops, simultaneously as the temperature rises, this one will rapidly increase. And this is an indication that um, you can now, you know, as we drive now, it goes, you can charge faster and faster. We are now at Nebenes and uh, it's gonna ramp up. And according to what I know from before, at 40% roughly and 20 degrees in the battery, we will get 70 kilowatt. Uh, close enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, no, a little bit more. Okay, 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 a little bit more. 72. Yeah, so based on this one, you see now, it couldn't heat up in time. So it's only 20 degrees Celsius. Ideally, you want to arrive here with 40 degrees, but it simply couldn't heat up in time. So, um, yeah, so now I just want to show you that this is usually what gets posted on Facebook. Like, hey, you know, this is 100, I'm gonna show you here. People are like, oh, well, it's 150 kilowatt max, so why am I only getting uh, 66 kilowatt? And then people start asking, well, where do you drive from? Well, you know, I drove, drove from Fredrikstad, you know, it was an hour away, uh, yeah, let's say one, one and a half hours away. Yeah, but that's simply not enough. 
you need 40 degrees, buddy. You have 20 degrees maybe, and you need 40. So that's why you're charging slow. And also, why did it drop now suddenly? Why, it was 70, right? And why did it drop? Simply because, like I told you, you know, the higher up you go in, in percentage, the slower you can charge. And it, it could take faster speed in the beginning, but <laughs> because state of charge went up, then the BMS said, ah, sorry, Mac, only 60 kilowatt now, because the battery, you see, this is also the problem. The battery uh, doesn't heat up that fast. We have the stators running at seven kilowatt now, which is max for them, but it simply doesn't heat up fast enough. And you might be wondering, but when you usually supercharge in summer, it will heat up much faster. Well, that's because then you are charging at 150 kilowatt or at least 140 kilowatt. But now, because you're only charging at 60 kilowatt or 70, that is not enough for the heat to build up inside the battery. So, yeah. So this is on the whole charging curve gets messed up. And this is not only for Tesla, it also applies to other cars. So, all right, but uh, now we will we'll go back and I will show you what happens back at Circle K. We are now at Circle K again, and uh, this time I plugged into the 50 kilowatt fast charger. I will show you now. You see, you might be wondering why um, am I only getting 32 kilowatt, 31 kilowatt? This is a 50 kilowatt fast charger. Is the battery not warm enough? Actually, the battery is warm enough to take 50 kilowatt, but the problem is that <laughs> the afterburners again, they are stealing 7 kilowatt. So actually, you would have been, you would have gotten 42 kilowatt, and uh, the reason why you can't get 50 kilowatt right now is a limitation of the the voltage. Let me show you here better. So you see, 350 uh, volt, and then uh, these chargers they deliver 120 usually 120 to 125 amp. So the number of uh, volt, I mean, the voltage is also limiting it. So. Ideally then for 50 kilowatt fast charger you want to arrive with uh, let's say at least 50 60 percent then you should get better speed than right now but okay now we're gonna move to the high power charger we are now connected to the 150 kilowatt fast charger and you see we're getting 122 kilowatt actually it's ramping up it should be 130 kilowatt from what I remember so um yeah just like I mentioned earlier because the state of charge is lower then you charge faster. And I can show you here the, all the data that um, you actually would, gotten, would have gotten even faster speed here if the battery wasn't that cold. But again, the afterburners are stealing seven kilowatt. This also happens at the supercharger, by the way. It will actually, it will run this until the battery is at around 40, 45, actually sometimes even 50 degrees. So there's not much you can do. This is controlled by the car. That's the way Tesla Model 3 works. So sometimes I kind of wish I did, like, could switch off these afterburners because I only need to top up a little bit and I don't need to waste the seven kilowatt on heating up the battery unnecessarily. But uh, nothing you could do about it. But let's see here, this one also, this reflects whatever you see on the screen. 122, if we switch over here, that's the number, yeah. So actually another fun fact is that Tesla will show you what goes into the battery when you are DC fast charging. When you are AC charging, then it shows you what you get from the plug, but not what goes into the battery, which is kind of confusing. But you see, in this scenario now, you're, you're getting decent speed. Uh, this is considered okay speed, getting 117 kilowatt now. Uh, and the battery, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that during the trip back to Oslo, the battery slowly heats up a little bit. When we left uh, Edemides, we had 22 degrees, so you see it heats up a little bit. But because, um, uh, let me show you also, uh, because the car doesn't, um, let me see, how do we find the charger? Uh, 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 yeah, well, I, I can't show you. Uh, I don't have, do I have any here? Let me check here. A best Western. Uh, let's go for fast charger. Hey, oh, no, no, it's that kind of filtering. Okay. Uh, what if we do this then? No, what the? Heh? Oh, yeah, this is just what I mentioned that the fast charger that would 
it would preheat at it's somewhere in Flensburg or you know the closest one. So no, for, but for Oslo, uh, yeah. The, the the problem is that if you try to navigate to a fast charger in Oslo, it will not preheat the battery. It doesn't know that that's a fast charger, even though. <laughs> It's kind of funny, right? Because if you zoom in here, you go closer, you see that we have Grun Contact charging station here. But in in the Tesla's brain, that is not interpreted as a fast charger. So it, it doesn't do the preheating thing here. So, But my point was that the preheating thing helps big time. When you go into a supercharger, it really heats up the battery quite fast. Uh, by driving it, you barely add any heat, especially today when it's cold outside. But yeah, it goes really slowly. So to summarize, my tip from this video is that um, to avoid slow fast charging, or I mean, yeah, to avoid the, the slowness, uh, you should preheat the car and battery while you're stationary. That will be the biggest uh, improvement because then you will start off with either 17 degrees Celsius in the Model S and X or in uh, Model 3 you will start off with around 28 degrees Celsius and that makes it way easier. If I preheated the battery at home and then I draw to the supercharger, it will heat up further so that I will arrive with uh, maybe 35, 40 degrees at the supercharger and I would receive 130 kilowatt over there instead of 60, 70 kilowatt. Uh, and also with a warmer battery, the theory is that uh, you have slightly less internal resistance, which improves efficiency also. But you also have to know that by preheating the battery, like I showed you in, in front of the house, it will suck a lot of power. So you have to be prepared that you will lose about 10% of the battery, but you also then heat up the cabin. So uh, there is no way to only preheat the battery without preheating the cabin. You have to you have to run it both simultaneously. And then another tip is that if you only want to heat up the cabin, then what you can do is you can put the car in camp mode and then lock the car. Remember to lock the car because then it doesn't automatically lock. Then it will only heat up the cabin without heating up the battery. And uh, what else? Yeah, and another very important thing is that if you want to have good speed, try to charge the battery when the battery is low. Around 10-20%, then you get pretty good speed. And then you know that it's like a snowball effect because if you arrive with low battery and fairly heated up battery, then you will get good speed. And then during the charging session, you will uh, the battery heat itself up because it charges fast and then it generates enough heat so that you can still get good speed the further out you charge it. But then the, the inverse snowball effect, the worst effect is that if the battery is cold, then what you saw at the Nebanese is that, okay, you still gain percentage, but you charge so slow and then that slow charging doesn't build up enough heat. So the charging curve uh, for this car is fairly flat, but when the battery is cold, then it drops more, it drops faster than usual. So yeah, hopefully this explains some of the questions you have about why your car is charging slow and all that stuff. Uh, so I hope this was useful for you. So that's going to be it for now then. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Do you have to say that? Yeah, I have to say that. So thank you for watching and talk to you later.